Okay. All right. I welcome you all to the Finance Committee meeting of April the 9th, 2015. Can I have a roll call, please? Present, we have Marilyn Jordan, Joan Pontes, Tom Worthen, Ellis Bailey, Jeff Langan, and Bonnie Jean Catulli. Do I have any citizens' participation? Seeing none. All right. Um, we can't do anything with the other monetary vote, um, monetary uh, articles until we get a town administrator here. So um, I passed out what I had written. Is everybody read it? Almost. Okay. We'll have to take a moment and finish reading, and then I'd like your thoughts on it. I was being slightly sarcastic at some times. Something clapping on the stairs out there. He'll be here in a second. There he is. You guys are waiting for me? I'm waiting yes. for you. Yes. <coughs> this is um, some really interesting reading. It was in your packet there for CPA? We're him at 84,110. <coughs> you look at Plymouth, 253,190. They're doing some building in Plymouth, huh? Nice. We can hold on that when you guys are done, and when the town administrator is ready, we can go ahead. Okay. Um, last night you saw that the school committee voted a uh, school budget number of uh, should have been twenty-seven thousand uh, twenty-seven million one hundred thirty-four thousand six fifty-five. The only difference is they hadn't given me the. Uh, there might be a change in what I have in this budget on the non-net number versus the net, but that's for their decision as to tell us where they, where they would want those. So I should get that tomorrow so I can update the document. It's my understanding that we're going to reduce the non-net school spending and in, into net school. Is that it? I th I think so. I thought it was about fifty thousand, but I prefer I I'd prefer that I have the the number written from on either email or written form. So if it's uh, it's different. I'm not the one that messed up. Um, I was just curious because after I read that, then it was kind of like, you know, I'm looking at your, your balanced budget and how you put the, the expenses into their line. Is that your intention to do that on the printed budget that goes into the warrant? Or are we going to go ahead with... I think we're in the traditional format. The traditional format. Okay. Mm. Were there any other changes to your side of the budget? Uh, I, I think we've. I've gone through multiple variations of this. I, I don't okay. even know from the realistically from the last well, time okay. we spoke. Go ahead. 
could you, the school came in over what you originally were looking for, is that correct? Uh, the, uh, the budget that they proposed was one that I had agreed upon with them, that I felt was uh, within the, the range. The number of a couple of weeks ago, which was still over, and you felt you could fit it in, I guess? Yeah, they had voted a number about, I thought it was maybe three or 400,000 higher than this. Okay. And last time they voted. So how, how did it come together to still stay balanced? What, no. what changed on our end, on the other end? Um, I guess, well, they reduced their budget request and it, brought it in under what we thought we could do. Okay. So. They started out at 27.9, went to 27.4, now they're 27.1. Right. So, yes, there have been reductions along the way. We know that we add additional uh, revenues from state aid, and I'd already spoken about that we had some reductions in the, uh, from Upper Cape Cod Tech, wasn't as high as we thought it would be, and the state and county assessments. So those were some of the things that helped reduce the overall budget deficit. Uh, you'll see that on page five of six, under overlay, overlay, We've put in an amount of 350000 If you, The previous year was a uh, triennial reval year, which you know you'll have more of the people appealing their taxes, which is why you have a higher overlay amount. Also in the past, you've seen the, uh, uh, especially in FY14, the senior work-off program cost was closer to 67000 Now it's closer to around the uh, 17800 so we've been able to reduce that. Ultimately, the Board of Assessors vote that number, but that's also a three-year average of whatever the overlay has been. So if you don't know what the overlay is, that's basically a reduction on the taxes. So we reduced the taxes um, as an offset by 350000 For anybody that comes in with an abatement, files an abatement with the uh, Appellate Tax Board and wins because we have to account for all those sorts of revenues. So that's anticipated? <clears throat> yeah. So, and if Typical it doesn't- number that's somewhere around that. Right. So it would be, you take about a three year average of it. So. Okay, so that's- Yeah, the, you know, I, we hope for zero and if it comes in at 350, <laughs> we- you know. Well, based upon our, the last time you were here, we talked about it. The, uh, just having constant at year by year, so it sounds like it's one of those. Yeah. It's easier to budget, roughly. Exactly. Um, you know, one of the big things is we're lucky the workers' comp did not come in as, uh, as high as we anticipated, and we have some additional credits as well that we're going to be able to use from Maya. We don't, so what we usually do is we don't use up all the credits that we have with Maya. You get credits for trainings, for attending sessions, for webinars, for driving classes. So it basically helps reduce your, uh, your insurance. We also do it for certain trainings for workers' comp. Uh, so we try not to budget those because when, if you remember, while we have a... Uh, a, uh, an amount that were billed for the overall insurance, we also have a $5,000 deductible. So if I have $20,000 in credits, I know that I can cover four, four incidents. That's a total deductible, or is it a per incident deductible? That's per incident. Uh, the, it is also per, uh, per fiscal year, so if that, so in other words, if we're in a lawsuit and maybe it's over workers' comp or uh, another another item, that five thousand dedu dollar deductible you'll pay the next year as well. So you pay five thousand for the first year if it's carrying on. Second fiscal year, it's another five thousand for that. It's uh, those are usually the ones where you're glad you have insurance because they've racked up several hundred thousand legal bills on the on the insurance side already. What was the major change with the library? Just a reduction that, uh, to try and make it fit within the budget. So we still do have the $30,000 available 
from the friends to open up spinny one day a week so if you take the thirty thousand in there as well um, that brings it up to the 207 and there's also the thirty thousand dollar revolving fund as well So I do want to say that I appreciate the uh, the hard work, obviously, of the, the superintendent and the business manager and the school committee in working together to come up with a number that we can all agree upon. Uh, it's still the, the Board of Slackman will vote on it Tuesday night. Uh, I'm hoping that there will be a unanimous vote, and uh, I appreciate everybody's hard work on this. So as of right now, unless any sort of drastic changes, I would think that these would be the, the numbers being brought forward. Go ahead, Tom. If I had just walked in here and looked at last year's school budget and know that there's a 2.5% uh, possible bump in um, revenue, I would have expected that school budget to go up 2.5%. Why doesn't that happen? Uh, because the school budget, when you think about it, you're thinking about it just on the budget portion. You're not thinking about the fixed costs as well. There's no fixed costs in this number? No, the fixed costs are, are down below. So overall, our entire budget this year, if you look at our expenses versus our revenues, is going up a certain portion. So if you want to just put it against one line and say, well, this line should go up 2.5%, it doesn't work that way. Get me just to the schools. Just talk about I can't get you just to the schools. It doesn't work that way, Tom. If our, uh, if our uh, retirement goes up, goes up 4%, the rest of the lines can't go up 2.5% because retirement I, is I'm eating up. I'm just looking at the total school expenditure. Right. Retirement, health benefits buildings, the whole deal, cost X. A year later, I'm just looking at it and say, where's my starting point? Yep. I would say it's 2.5% higher. You can't do that. Nothing. You, <laughs> can't nothing. is a word I don't understand. Well, I would say you can't reasonably do that because you will bankrupt the community. But, okay. but then to explain to me what... Costs go up greater than two and a half percent every I, year. I understand that. Well, you're but looking at this. Uh, at, what is the school going to spend next year or this year? What are the they school spend this out year of their spend next out year? of their budget for salaries and expenses, including the non-net transportation, they'll spend twenty-seven million one hundred thirty-four thousand six hundred fifty-five dollars. Which is one percent. A tenth of one. And if you of, go of last year increase, okay. Percent. And if you take on top of that, they've increased by closer six hundred thousand dollars on the fixed costs. Where where is that here? It's so, bare, it's within the, the employ. It's in with the employee benefits. It's in um, the yeah. the other budget article for education. It's all within that. Um, okay. Let me. Yeah, I think I could. Because that number has been a confusing one, but I think you okay. said the last time that you kind of mm -hmm. said, here's the pot All right. to them, but you still report it in the town's budget is not part of it. So they're, what they're really spending, if you want to include their portion of the fixed cost is 20, 27 plus right. that portion of it. Yeah. So if that portion goes up a lot, that starts to reduce the amount of money that they... I, get no, I understand it, but we, but we know their share of the pot, so we ought to be able to say they spent last year in total. So I guess... And I the, just, just no, the, the, the question is, Tom, when you talk about percentages, um, you'll, you'll simply, if you do it on a percentage basis, you know, and I appreciate you listening to it, you will bankrupt the town. And I say this because you have a town portion that is a much smaller percent, yet you have personnel in there. So if you say, well, they only go up two and a half percent, it's not going to work. 
the, the, the personnel cost goes up more than 2.5% because the contracts are probably up 2.5%, and that's only 60% of, of what an employee yeah. costs because they've got health yeah. and, and retirement on right. top of that. And this is the first year that the town is actually, because we have the, uh, the back contracts, we're funding those on the town's portion. That's uh, five years worth of contracts that you are has not been funded that you're funding in one year for FY16. Okay, so, well, I think and, that's important information that the town want to, would want to hear. But I've talked about that in building up the budget no. and such. But in presenting it on the, the uh, town meeting floor, if you could just get it to a simpler thing than a lot of lines together, which they don't understand how the they interact. I, don't, I, I, I think it would be a, a run spot run approach to presenting the budget to the town that they would understand and have more sympathy for what situation you're juggling every day. Let me, let me, I'm not sure you guys are Pardon me. talking Sorry. the same thing here. They went up about 1% of what they're spending because their fixed costs went up a lot more. And if, and if you looked at the, the amount of money that was left after in the five-year plan, after all the fixed costs kept adding up year after year after year, it works out to be about the town gets about to spend increase. If you want a level budget, all other things not happening because he's had some other things happen. Only 1% increase. That's the dilemma that the town faces. So that it's, I mean, the schools are the big portion of it, the police are another big portion of it. The next biggest thing is maintenance. Beyond that, there's another yes. five million or so. But all of that stuff can only go up about 1% if you want a balanced budget given what was in the five-year plan last year. Because the fixed costs are eating it all. They're going up more than 1%, a lot more. Health. Uh, retirement. Those, 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 are, those aren't fixed costs. Those are the human costs. Those are people costs. But we owe. What it kills us is people costs. I see what you're saying. Okay, you're saying, well, let's separate it. That's what Derek did last time he was here because when you did the benefits, you broke them down into like current employees and and retired employees. Mm -hmm. Retired employees, if I recall, went up like seven or eight percent some of their stuff, whereas the current employees, based upon the Mayflower. Are only up a couple percent. Yeah, the um, for the actual health insurance cost through the Mayflower Group, the current employees there. There's two, two. Um, well, there's more than two, but you have Harvard Pilgrim, you have Blue Cross Blue Shield. Well, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield went up uh, two percent. Harvard Pilgrim four percent. Mayflower is going to actually reduce, believe it or not, the retirees. Because of the Medicare, so okay. because of the yeah. Part D supplement revenue that they get back, and they've been building up on that trust. So that's where they have a 7.4% reduction on one, and I believe a, um, oh shoot, it's a 5% a, a reduction on the, the other. This is probably one of our best years for, uh, you know, for our health insurance going up a minimum and uh, some of the other items but yeah, I mean, if you look yeah. just our offsets the state and county assessments when you look at it go up they went up over over 10 percent so from tom's point i think let's see if i got it right is that I, i'm just personnel, trying to personnel costs are going up faster if you want to say within the balanced budget you got to reduce the number of personnel i'm not sure you that's would absolutely. disagree with that no nope. because that's probably exactly what we're looking at across the board in order to try and squeeze all this stuff into the, the size number, of the bag. The number of personnel or the average age of the personnel or the, how far they are along in their progression of, of where they, yeah, salary they with us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, so what? So the t I went, if the town understands that better, I think you would get people not saying you guys are blowing money here, there, and everywhere in this money. That they don't, people don't understand. And you hand them this, and they don't, they don't know how all the pieces of the puzzle, you need to work in bigger units to well, explain it to them, I think. 
I did. You, you did that last year when you started out with the five-year plan because you put the fixed cost right up front at the top and kind of said, you know, thank you very much, that's gone. Right. And it's getting bigger. It's not going to get smaller. So here's all that's left. And then, you know, each, you know, what we've just been through in the budget process is try to allocate that between all the various users. And there's not enough, so something's got to get cut. The school budget didn't get what they wanted. Um, and we made some other hard choices along the way. I mean, mm -hmm. last year, I mean, the one thing that they could look at is the stuff that we cut last year, it's not coming back. Yeah, I mean, they've done a, they've done a, a good job of looking at their facilities and their space needs and cut those back, and they continue to cut them back for next year. Yeah, I think, Tom, one of the simple things to represent is that if you look at what we spent in FY13 from the town's budget, that was $11.375 million. In, uh, what line are we on? Where are we at? Page four of six. In FY14, we went down to $10.779 million. Last year, we budgeted about $9.7 million. We're going back up to 10.5, which is still uh, about $250,000 less than FY14, and about what 1.75, sorry, 1.85, uh, excuse me, million less than what we spent in FY13. That would be very good in your addressing the preamble to the. So while I know it seems like the budget. we have a large percentage increase this year, it's also, um, we've made reductions, but when you have five years worth of contracts coming forward, even though two of those years were zeros for, uh, for <laughs> most of the unions, you know, you have three years, which is basically during it, it was 6%, uh, if you will, you know, two, uh, so it was a one-one split, so two, two, and two, 6%. Of the uh, right off the bat of uh, seven million is over four hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So when you look at that, it's you know just the just the back contractual issues, not including any step increases with new employees and that's such. A, that's a one-time. Next year we don't. You're not. No, you still have to continue funding that because we, we've budget. If you remember the past due, the retro we've paid through free cash. We appropriate the last town meeting. Um, the selectmen will be voting to ratify, hopefully ratify the police contract on Tuesday, which we would have to fund for the retro. But all that past due money gets caught up because you never budgeted those. So now you have to budget in FY16 for basically everything that was past due. You're not repaying those amounts, but the salaries have increased. Okay, so that's a one-time event. And it like, looks like it's, it's $800,000 or something like that, you could argue, is kind of a one-time catch-up and so forth. Yeah, good I portion think, of that. I think what we need to make sure that it doesn't get misinterpreted, um, gee, you're spending $800,000 more. Ah, we didn't need that override. Right. And you're, I, I think you would say that yes you did because we still you know after we pay all this stuff we still can't bring back all the things we took away um, and we can't go out and fix roads and do other things that we would have preferred to do yeah we're trying to that's um, am i we're bringing yeah okay is that yeah. that that I mean, we need I to be mean, doing. we need I, to, we gotta set that's be clear. <laughs> another override vote somehow so that and the people have to be educated to the fact that there's very prudent financial management going yeah. on now in an effort to reduce the overall load that the, the, the town is carrying. I mean, I, if I were you, if, if we could, I'd take all of the f empty buildings we've got and have an auction mm -hmm. and get rid of them so we don't insure them, we don't heat them, we don't do anything to them. It's a, and we might not get full value, but we get full value versus holding them for four or five years and then either repairing the roof or, or selling. But let's stay on the subject because 
you, what you brought up is explaining why this went up uh, is going to be an important piece if anybody reads this. I think the first assumption is that people read it, and there's obviously some at, at the town meeting that will. I'm not sure that others will, but why went up a million is because we've done, you've done a hell of a job of renegotiating contracts, getting all the stuff cleaned up from the past, and this is money that's due because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. You renegotiate, second thing, you get it down to like three bullet points. The second thing is you've got the, the benefits um, much more mm -hmm. under control, which is what you, you, you uh, talked about uh, last week, because that's, that's a coup. I mean, that, you, you go through when, when uh, uh, cities and towns get through a, um, or the receivership, that's the first thing they go after, and we've, you've gone, we've, we're going down that list mm -hmm. doing those things, so that's gone. Despite all that, there are fixed costs and other things that are still going up. Maybe not at the rate you thought a year ago, but you also pointed out that there's no guarantees. I mean, some of the stuff rocks up and down right. as you go along. So um, the, the road in front of us isn't smooth. It's still going to be bumpy. Um, I think that's a that's a message. I mean, and, and on but, one hand, but there's been pro a lot of good stuff happened. Progress has been made. More, yeah. And you may, you're probably going to see some more uh, issues. And, you know, like headcount costs money. I mean, people can relate to that. Not even, not just the present salary, the benefits these days, you know, rock it up a lot. Yeah, I think one of the people, things people forget is uh, before the override, we could not promise we were going into the Mayflower Municipal Health and Church Group because they needed to vote to accept us. And that was uh, when people asked and said, well, are you definitely going to to make this change? I, I, no, I can't promise you that. It's, I see it's the same old games, but no, it's it's called being honest about it, I guess. You know, I, I would love to overpromise, promise um, but the, the, it doesn't work that way. You overpromise and you under-deliver once and everybody never forgets that. So, that's, so in, assess, in essence, this is kind of an over-delivery, but it doesn't yeah. fix the fundamental right. problems that's still with us. No, I mean, we've done between the uh, moving into the Mayflower group when we were experiencing 11% increases before, uh, the employees taking uh, seven and a half percent, if you will, of the uh, of the insurance burden. When that's a, think of that as an amount of about ten million a year at seven and a half percent of that. That's seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year that they've been they've now been giving back that that people forget about. And you know, there's I know that all those, uh, I know that all the municipal employees are rich. You know, that's that's the first thing you hear. But you've got the employees making uh, between thirty and thirty-five thousand dollars a year that had their salaries effectively reduced by by a thousand dollars by this health insurance hit, and that's compounding into the future when you think about it because that split, the seven and a half percent change for every increase, yeah, now it's affecting them going into the future. Uh, that, Say this after the negotiations, which is <laughs> it's a lot better saying. It's. I guess my point is that we, you know, it's ever, ever since I've been going to town meetings, which hasn't been that long, seven years, it's been, a, you know, the, the mountain ahead of us is very, very steep. At least we're moving up the mountain. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and sometimes, I mean, we've. We're making changes to 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 be more efficient. We're we're looking at ways that we can work better. I'm looking at uh, uh, hopefully having a position that's essentially a floater, if you will, for somebody that can go into an office, do projects. Somebody that when when we have somebody out, we can we don't have to close down that office. I mean, it's. Uh, it's it's sort of the the jack of all trades mentality. We need people like that. It's. But that building we have over there as well, it's, uh, you know, it's a beautiful building. It really it is. is. But, <laughs> but it's for the type of operations we have, it, it's inefficient for the staffing levels we, we have as well. You should. The stair we, climb is yeah. good exercise. Yeah. But you can say. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I would. I left the vending machine with a bag of chips and started heading towards the elevator and realized I should probably take the stairs. <laughs> but, 
<laughs> yeah, there. This is the type of thing we we resolved a budget. It it isn't everything that the town needs. It certainly isn't everything the school the school needs to. So, you know, the relief of having a balanced budget needs to be tempered by the fact that it really it uh, it reduced services again, especially on the school side. So. Uh, you know that it's almost almost one of the shames is that every year we do balance a budget. There's no gimmick in this year. There's no you know health health trust fund or, or using free cash or anything like that. But it's it's a lot of people working together to make the tough decisions, and that's what I've really appreciated. Because I was sitting back just listening to the show. Everybody looks at me. <laughs> well, well, you have a word for that. Are you two term? exhausted yourself? Yes, okay. All right. Well, I did notice I, that. I, 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 Devil's I, advocating. I don't think it's all, all, should all be black. I think we should, um, you should take credit for some of the progress that's being made and recognize that there's more to be made. As you, as you recognize there's more to be made. Right. Yeah, we have we've got great employees. You know, we've uh, they're working hard. That you know, are working beyond what they should. Uh, you know, there's, you lose people, and uh, the work keeps on going forward. And some some will say, well, you didn't need those other people. Well, well you, yeah, you're, we're lucky enough to have dedicated people that have picked up the the slack. Uh, I know that there's a. Uh, that people uh, complain about unions and such, but I haven't, uh, since I've been here, I've never had a grievance about somebody uh, picking up the work from somebody else that, that was gone. Can't say that that'll happen forever, but it's the type of mentality we have. We have people that just keep on working. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of good volunteers as well that are working together. It's interesting when you start aiming in the same direction, what you get. Okay, my turn. It's all yours. <laughs> I'm just curious your um, your your um, line on debt service altered drastically from your end to back to, um, which brings me up to capital plan. Do we have a capital plan? Uh, no, there'd be really, really nothing new. You will have some capital items uh, for. For FY16, water pollution control will be spending a little over a million dollars on capital items. So you'll have that list. We'll be seeking a purchase uh, through lease for cruisers. However, the first year's payment, we'll be looking to use the Walmart money that we have from the uh, from when the Walmart opens up. They provided 250000 So you don't have to de de anything definitive on this? Yes, no, maybe? You'd have to describe definitive. I'm, I'm definitive enough for us to take a vote. No, not on that. Well, we're done today. Okay. I'm <laughs> just telling you that. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand it. Um, okay. But you may be bringing something just before town meeting? Yeah, you'll probably receive it before, okay. before town meeting. I understand you won't meet again before that. But. Okay. Um, um, when you look at the, uh, the uh, debt service, that's realistically just yeah, that's old bills. That's the bill. What we've already got. Yeah. That's, okay. We've been hoping to increase that. I, my recommendation is that you never go below uh, $2 million on that. I've gone as low as one point five in speaking about it. But if you kept $2 million on that line, you'd be able to do a lot of work on the capital needs for this community. You know, if you're doing short-term borrowing on some of them, three years for any of the uh, any sort of vehicular needs, uh, building needs, anything like that, and that's where I think we need to concentrate as well, building up our building up the capital program. So we're not going to have anything to actually insert in the um, in the handout at this point. It's probably going to be something. Not that you would have voted on. So that's pretty much on you both your FY15 and your FY16 capital plan, or are you going to 
believe one of these out of here. No, we both of them. We know that we need the uh, we need the voting machines, uh, which are, will be thirty nine thousand dollars. But I also have water pollution has requested a uh, front end loader, and they want it where they will the the ability to purchase it in FY fifteen, but the first billing wouldn't be till FY sixteen. So I'm looking on how that would would work out because you would need the authority for mm -hmm. FY in FY15, which would be the special town meeting to purchase it. Mm -hmm. But if the first bill is due in FY16, that's that's fine. I just want to make sure that that's going to be a tough one to explain to town meeting. I, I think so. It'd be a three-year lease for that. The front end loader is roughly about one hundred fifty-five thousand dollars. Would also come with. Um, I think it's called the uh, the uh, split V plow on there, which is if you know what the V plow is, much better for punching through. And it may be that um, you know, good Lord willing, we don't have a storm like this, so like we've had or a winter. But if we do, they need to still be able to get to their pump stations and to get around their facility as well. So um, the extra money for that V plow. I think they're going to trade in uh, an old plow from the other uh, the loader. It's just, I mean, it's worth all, it's worth the money. You'll see. I think everybody would probably agree if they uh, if they've ever had sewer backing up into their house that <laughs> <laughs> might be important. Yeah. How is it? How is that grease or later or whatever the heck it, you bought last year? Is uh, it making money? No, the grease seal hasn't even been installed. We've been working on the contracts with the company. We should just uh, just have it finished because you have to bid that out, and now we've been working on the fine print. Cause don't forget, most of the companies once you bid it out, they want you to, um, if there's any sort of legal issues, they want it to be done in California courts, Canadian courts, things like that. Yeah, you know from the business world how they it's try and it's one on one. <laughs> all right, so uh, make it so inconvenient that you just give in. Recently, uh, in this contract, one of the uh, last issues we've been dealing with is they wanted us to indemnify them uh, if there was uh, if the, and have our insurance pay for for items if we ever negligently use the product. And we what? said we don't indemnify for that. Nobody so, would sign that. Yeah. Even a commercial customer wouldn't uh, sign that. So that's uh, probably the, it's almost been four weeks on just that item as long going with their their um, their legal team as well. So that's uh, we don't take the contracts lightly anymore. So. Can we walk on the whole deal? Sure, we could if we want, and we'll re we can rebid for for another company as well. And they've already they've already laid out some uh, some costs on it, so they are. Um, they are driven to get it done. Skin in the game. Yeah. It's nice when the roles are reversed. <laughs> so. Yeah, it's amazing how long it actually takes when you're doing it properly to uh, to do the pro whole process of bidding it out then going through because just the award is the first part. Then you work on the fine points of the contract because this isn't just the purchase of the equipment. It's a purchase, the installation, the follow-up, the training, the education. So, so I don't know if people anticipate that Greasilla would just be, you know, driven in, dropped off of the back of a truck, and we'd start, uh, you know, turning lead into gold. But <laughs> it takes a little bit longer than that. Um, and. This line item transfer, Article One, you said we're just going to have the Veterans Commission. Is that the only thing you're going to have? No, there'll be no, there'll, there'll be, be other thing. ones. The county's been working on that. Okay, so we're not going to have that no. either. Okay. That one's almost always been a last minute. Okay, so I think the only thing we have to vote on is Derek's wonderful um, <coughs> budget. that we're voting on six. I don't know if it's my budget, so you can call it the wonderful <laughs> Derek, wonderful Derek's budget? I don't know. <laughs> Article 6 of the main town meeting? Yep. 
And then you also have, the, you can vote on the EMS. I don't know if you've already voted on that. Did you I vote? think we've done all that on EMS. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and yep, WPCS. We right. just had the, like I said, the capital, the, um, the budget, and your line transfer. That was right. it. So again, the only thing that you, you know, if there's any changes, I'll let you know. I do anticipate the school's bottom line to remain the same. But I think there uh, there'll be a change from their non-net to net. So if you're if you're just voting the budget as a whole, I don't think that'll be an issue. Okay. So like a motion to vote on the wonderful uh, Article Six. I move that we vote on the wonderful Article Six at the main town meeting. Is that a motion for approval? A motion for approval. I'm sorry. Approval yeah. of the budget. I have a motion for approval. Second. And a second. And one article. Hmm? Six. Six of the main town uh, meeting. Article six. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? We have six. Do you have anything else you'd like us to know about? No, we went to the, uh, we did go to the Mayflower Municipal Health Insurance Group to their meeting to vote on the rates. So the vo rates were voted on, they'll be implemented. Um, that's all, we should be getting the Wareham rates within the next week, I would say, because our rates are different because we still have the, uh, the buy-in. So uh, the audit has been completed for the, or the on-site portion completed by Powers and Sullivan for the health trust. So we're waiting to, to hear the results from them. Um, they're still following up with Blue Cross and such. Um, Blue Cross took a little over a million dollar deposit for when we left being self-insured for the run out. And it was essentially two months, a little over the, because our IBNR was, was down to under 700,000, but they, they felt that they would take uh, roughly a million. They've only spent maybe about 300, 350,000 out of it since October. Uh, however, they won't review uh, a release until one full year. So after, after one full year in October, we will write them a letter requesting a release and then they will not release all funds until two full years. So, yeah, but you you want to consider it a savings plan. Yeah, so if we get three hundred fifty thousand back in uh, in October, maybe we can try and get ahead of time from town meeting. We can use it on some capital items, and the following year maybe the same thing. Yeah. Oh, technically it probably should go back to the health trust fund. Yeah, they actually would end up going back to health trust funds. So you'd have to appropriate out of that. But um, that's uh, that's pretty much some of the some of the real fun items. Do we have any questions? All right. Since we're not going to have the information for um, the capital plan on the regular town meeting. Article five, I would recommend a motion of no action at this time. We're not gonna have anything on the twenty up to the twenty seventh no? We will, but nothing for nothing for the warrant book. Oh, um, okay. I was so I works. would write a motion, but I mean I would write a recommendation similar to the ones that I did, did for before. the others yeah. that we will reconsider or we may reconsider our vote prior to town meeting. Is that agreed by everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay, I would entertain a motion of no action on Article 5. I move that we had <clears throat> a motion that we uh, take no action on Article 5. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. All in favor of no action on Article 5? Say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I would recommend the same for the special town meeting, Articles 1 and 2. I would entertain a 
motion of no action on Article One, line item transfer, the special town meeting. Okay. So move. Second. <laughs> Whatever. I can't actually make the motion, but okay. I'm trying to lead you guys uh, so down move. the path. Here. So I was trying to get someone else. I will motion. Move, make a motion that we uh, take a uh, vote no no action on item one of the special time meeting. Um, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? And same for Article 2 for the FY15 capital plan. Do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion that we vote no action on Article Number 2, Fiscal Year 15 Capital Plan. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okay, and I'll take care of writing those and cleaning those up. Okay. We're going to have a lot on our plate the night of town meeting when we get this final information. I did hear from, while I was, I, I don't rudely talk on my phone. But that was Mr. Slavin on the phone. Um, that he is apologizes he can't be here this evening. Um, but he did let me know that the selectmen would be taking their votes on Tuesday. I'm not sure how that is going to work out with the printing. I can't see her holding off until Tuesday for their votes. We got it down. All right, I'm going to leave that in your capable hands as to whether the Board of Selectmen's final votes get into this printing or not. This, is, this means inside printing? Oh, Do we decide on it? They <laughs> are going to attempt to inside print this. Haven't we done it before? Sticker. Yes, several times. Works. Um, okay. Uh, are you anything else for us, Derek, other than that? No, these have been the... Uh, the the main items. Okay. I did um, write up my forward for the handout. I've already scratched out the one line, which was my favorite. Now that you like crushed my crushed me. Which which one's that? Capital. No, I was you know the fact that I was really looking forward to having the the um, employee fixed costs in the school line item, and now I'm disappointed it's not there. So I've already scratched that part out of my my statement here. I was. You know, it was on the back side on the, in the second <coughs> half. Um, it's still like, a, you know, I, I still want to make a point of people understanding that this number, where they look at this and say, oh, the school's just pretty much funded level funding right across, even though we're going to make that little adjustment between the uh, big deal, what's that? Um, I still want them to understand that there's an additional figure involved in the education of our children, and that is the employee fixed costs. Um, and do you have any idea, like a roundabout number that that actually is? Oh, yeah, you're, I mean, you're looking closer to 30, 34 million, I think, on this, and that's not including grants, the outside grants and such, which can range from four to five million on top of that, that don't get budgeted whatsoever. So you're talking. So you're saying they go from 27 to 34 just by the fixed cost inclusion? Yeah, that should be should be right around that range because just the and I'm not just talking the fixed cost. I'm talking about the state assessments, which include the retired teachers, because the um, if you look at the the number on there for the state and county assessments, yeah, roughly three million dollars is the school. That's what I thought. I was re looking using your comparison from right. before where you pulled it out. Um. Yeah, and that's, I mean, people have to understand that's not saying, that's not saying anything negative to the schools. It's just explaining these are the costs, folks. This I is think what it costs. Yeah, rather than pull it out, it's, it's stated somewhere. I, I, well, that's, I really want to say that. And because you're, you're talking, you have 259000 a year. So even if you took out 300000 so there's like, there's $3 million of county and state assessments that are direct costs to the school department. Mm -hmm. Those are retired teachers. They're retired teachers. There's the school choice sending, uh, yeah. the, the charter school. There's a small uh, special education cost on there. Uh, if you pull up the, the state, uh, the cherry sheets on the assessments, you'll see precisely what it is. 
then I mean, even on the uh, when you go to the employee benefits yeah. uh, on the retirement don't forget the besides the teachers there's other employees in there that uh, represent yeah, the retirement uh, the, the town's a larger portion I think the school only represents approximately 40 percent of that number so there's another what, one one point three million uh the workers comp and the general liability you could i've got that written out they're probably a, between 40 and 50 percent of, of those numbers together medical insurance uh, i would say depending on the number of uh, subscribers about 65 to 65 percent fica is based on uh, salary and payroll so i'd say easily 60 to 65 percent of that so and you and this isn't the school's cost our our schools don't pay for this but it's an educational cost and the upper cape cod tech of uh of 2.8 million dollars mm -hmm. so but that I'm was probably a, grossly underestimating it at but that was a deal million. i mean after you go through and listen to it you realize that the state formula is giving us a yep. real deal so for the people to criticize spending yep. that 2.8 million stop because mm -hmm. um that is one area where the state basically says, based upon our average income and, and the value of the property, um, we get a good deal. We get a discount. Yeah, yeah I mean, obviously, so. we'd, we would love to have we would love to have uh, uh, the two point eight million back into our school system mm -hmm. and such, but I don't think anybody will will tell you that that the upper cape cod deck does anything but an excellent job yeah it's everybody that i keep kids want to go there <laughs> yeah that's it yep. it does they do a great job and that was pretty obvious when you talk to the kids or else you look at what you know at the presentation did i get it right in the um, school presentation that the special education needs um, I walked away with the impression that 1% of our students take 10% of the uh, spending. Uh, I, I know what you're, you're, you're asking on there, and I, I honestly can't remember the ratio, so I'm not going to misspeak on <laughs> it. No, I but, would get it verified, but the, but the point is... I remember, it, and I'm sorry to cut you off, at one, that's, either a couple of years ago, um, two, two to four students represent something, something like six to, to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars in costs and you know it's that's a lot but at the same time that's that's our social contract that's what we No, all, i think you have to say that i mean for. people yeah. will, will gripe about it but and it, but it's a state mandate and if you're the parent yeah. of one of those students absolutely um yeah. you know you, the town can't walk away from that obligation um, yeah. you know it's um until we're in other people's shoes, you, you, you don't realize what it means for, and, uh, for kids to, to be able to have education. That's what's so great about our, you know, our country, if you will. Bonnie, if you do take what you wanted to do and just weave it in, you know, into a lump sum, because if people read about that every day. I, to, yeah, I, I'm going to. I'm, I was fuddling around with it, and I do have the state assessment over, the, over yeah, here. It's in there. Um, I'm going to take that line out and write something to indicate the fact that, and in addition to this, these are the, these are the other costs involved with educating our children. I think it's important that, that they do know that. Is, yeah, in order are to those ones that the taxpayers were paying that? It's not state or anything else like that we're paying those those costs uh you're paying those but the the state um does provide what 12.6 million dollars in state aid so when you take it down what's Pardon, in, yeah you uh, know i think our foundation budget what the town's supposed to contribute is anywhere from 19 to to, to 21 million so the, if you remember that all the chapter 70 items that uh, Superintendent Dutch went over. So there's uh, chapter seven is really an interesting, interesting thing that you, it's the type of thing that you can spend an entire day learning. And then if somebody asked you three weeks later, you'd say, I, I don't remember. So. But I thought Bonnie's point is, you know, if this is all somebody reads, you want them to walk away with that. Um, I mean, I think, in the yeah, process well, going through this, I think we walked away with an impression about Upper Cape. 
in like that. We walked away with the, with the special needs. I mean, I never realized that, you know, what we have to, what we have to go through, state mandate. Okay, I mean, that's, we don't have a choice for those, those folks who sit there and go, well, you don't have to do the state mandates. No, we have that and it is an obligation. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there's certain, you can move there's to certain state mandates like where they, when you look at the veterans, if you decided, hey, we're, n we're not going to cover this, and I'm not saying, um, saying that's right by any stretch, but they say, okay, yeah, we'll pay for it. You won't receive a reimbursement, and we'll charge you a 10% administration, administration fee on top of it. So some of the mandates the state does make it so you can't say no to. Yeah. And the people here pay money into the state. And the people buy lottery tickets. So that, that's, fund education. That's yeah, a good point. That, that, yeah, that, that money's yeah. coming back. So I, if she can mention, this is what it it costs total education. It's it's the education about that we went through, just in this budgetary process about learning about kind of where it all goes and how it all comes together. Um, and you start to look at it, and, and uh, these are the facts, ma'am. Yes. <laughs> this is what it is. Yep. And, and uh, you know, it's not wildly out of whack when you compare it with, with, with other municipalities to the where people are sitting there going, you know, don't do it. Well, no, you have to do it, some of it. And you know, that's where you get back into that we're cutting a lot of things because we just can't fund it anymore. Well, and we, well, we even have to do better than we're doing now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at surrounding communities, Bourne that's had multiple overrides, I think the value today are worth more than $6 million Are They're making cuts. They're, they're making some tough cuts, and they'll probably have to do an override again. It's... Um, I, I don't doubt that Proposition 2 and a half has helped um, streamline things and make, make things have to be done better, but it, I can tell you if, you, if you limited any business to only raising their, uh, their revenue by 2.5% every, every year and told them they had to keep on expanding, uh, I don't think that would, that would work too well. Well, we, we in this, have, we in this funny take, thing called the real world I always hear about. We're, we're, we're not <laughs> taking full advantage of what technology offers and the potential for technology to reduce the cost of the tra how we transact business. And that's where we got to go to. What, what about the buildings that are vacant? Mm -hmm. is, is there a way to, to um, get them into somebody else's hands so that they're not our responsibility in any way? There is, the there's Everett also- school, The West School. There's also, Tom, when you, you look at it, just getting into other people's hands, I, I, I know that you're, uh, you're saying, well, that's a great thing, but if you just get into somebody's hands and they put in a 40B development, and uh, there's a bunch of new kids running into that 40B development. Well, that sure didn't work out well for us, did it? So well, when people say right, just get we, rid of the, stuff. If the warrant goes through on the change of uh, uh, what mobile, mobile, mobile homes are going to be, how they're going to be looked at from a 40B point of view, Let's, that is, gives us some sort of a defense And that's why we're, that's why we're trying very hard to to work to make sure that the items such as that count towards it, but that's what that hasn't gone through, hasn't been accepted, hasn't been so. I know it, it always sounds easier, just get rid of this, get rid of that. It's fine, you'll make a few bucks, that's great, but somebody put something in there that, that works, uh, works uh, against the town, if you will. You know, we've got, you've got Hammond School, it's got the Boys and Girls Club in there. Now we could, we could do several things. We could redevelop the entire area uh, into senior, senior housing as well as have the developer put in a club for the boys and girls. You could turn it into parking. You could turn it into several things, but you don't want to just get rid of that and, and leave it up in the air of what happens. I'll tell you, the, the one thing that, that everybody needs to remember is I believe in, in public-private partnerships, 
but I don't believe that the uh, the private sector always does what's good out of the, the the goodness of their heart, if you will. So it's it's to make the top dollar, and that may not always be in the best interest of the town and the community as a whole. I, I'm, I'm not. And I call and I call I'm my friends in the, in the one time yeah. in the one time dollar. I'm interested in the overall continuing yeah. costs of having that property. Yeah, I which could know. be which could be small time compared to the damage that could be done. That's why I think we've often shot from the hip. I think it's smarter to plan for plan for the future, and that's part of the items we've done, including putting the stabilization money aside, not dwindling that down. If we can. You know, Tom, I, I think you're right. We do need to get rid of these in, in some sort of fashion. But I think if we're going to do it, we need to do it what's in the best interest of the town and the best return, and not necessarily dollar-wise. It may be that we one of these buildings, you essentially, uh, people are going to cringe, but you give it up for nothing to a developer as long as they develop it in the vision and the envelope of what's best for the community. So, this is good because yeah, what you, just, what what you just outlined, Right. Is we're not sitting there saying just sell them, right. but you outline here's a set of criteria which what is what we want for the town. You go back to Bonnie's theme. It's right here. What do we want? And we've been in enough of these meetings to, to know that we don't want and can't afford to have families moving in where we have to educate the kids. At this point, we have too much on our plate. So seniors and so forth. And we're not unusual like that. The town of Plymouth, is, they want to develop the stuff behind the, uh, what's the shopping center where the, where the, the empty uh, Sam's Club and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. They want to develop it and the town is very specific. We do not want any, any uh, <coughs> type of housing that requires us to educate kids. That's the town person saying that. We, you know, you want senior housing and so forth. Right. So I, I think that, that we need to, and this gets back to your theme, what do you want to be? Right now, what we need is to take things, assets, and convert them into something that generates revenue for us. We need revenue, basically, that doesn't load us up with obligations um, right in the middle of turning the schools around. I mean, the, we're seeing some progress, okay? The 55% comprehension rate in math, is, the latest I saw was 62 that's good. Still not the state average of 75, but it's moving in the right direction. We want to follow that through and finish it, but we don't want to burden them with with any more because um, we can't afford it. I mean, we need to be honest. We just can't afford it. We need is a tax rate. So I think the, the discussions that, that would be helpful for us to have is not to say, no, we can't do it, but rather to say, what would it take right. for us to do it in a way that's beneficial, that's, that's part of the direction that we want to take the town? Um, Short-term, long-term, because you've got to work your way uh, towards a long-term thing. So I just take Tom's thing about selling some of those buildings. Well, even you said, that, well, I'll give them away if I get the right application for them. Right. That's positive, because if we can get taxpaying revenue Ultimately, uh, that's not my choice. I'm just saying that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not necessarily yeah. bad, though. You see, it's been done elsewhere. Yep. I mean, people do that kind of stuff so that you fundamentally can get your revenue stream up. Because the piece that's missing here that's not in here is it's not just two and a half that's going to raise revenue, it's the new, um, new growth line that you've got in here. It's three hundred thousand dollars this past year. It's not bad, except we need 10 times that um, on our, uh, in order to make it in the next mm. five years. So how is that going to happen? We're going to have to get into discussions about doing some of these things and, and moving forward and, and watch our biases about what didn't work in the past and all the rest mm. of the stuff because it's, I mean, you pointed out, it's a new game. So how, do you, how do you pick and choose oh. you know, what, what you want to have in your town? I suppose. Well, lots of ways. You yeah. approach builders with, uh, with a vision of what you want in that area. Right. It, you give them the idea, which is my question. Are we, is, are we approaching builders and developers with some of these lots to say, we would be happy with X, Y, and Z? Um, do you see yourself uh, going into this project? And what would you give us for the building? Yeah, you know, there's... 
the one of the things is we're we're in an open government, so you know there's I will speak to people, I'll talk to them about their interests, but when you start taking the next step, you need to you need to bring the community in on that, and that's one of the things that's hampered uh, hampered in a way. Uh, it sounds awful, but if I want to speak to uh, you know to uh, to Joe Builder, and I say. You know, I'd really, I'm seeing senior housing there with maybe, uh, or maybe you can, uh, you can build some parking lots there uh, and such. You know, are you, do you need to go out and announce that ahead of time and such? It's a, you, we, we ride sort of this crazy line here because everybody wants to know what, what we're doing. But at the same time, it's a, if, you, if you're doing that as a business operation, how do you, how do, you do that? Can we rezone them in a certain way that directs people to build certain projects? I think and, that's that's and something. And be very they, stubborn about changing the zoning, make it difficult. However, yeah. I'm not sure how it all works, but uh, there's still spot learning. zoning you have to watch out for for certain items like that. But I mean, zoning by its very nature is you're saying that's, what should go that's in why there. I want. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, that's why I asked the question. Yeah, yeah, that's. Uh, I think there needs to be changes, and you if you look on. Cranberry Highway, and it's not. So I don't have anything against uh, against people in mobile homes. In fact, we used to spend the summers down on Westport Beach when they used to allow the mobile homes on uh, d down on there. Some got wiped away. They still do. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, you look at you look on Cranberry Highway. Is uh, is a group of mobile homes the best use for one of our main commercial areas? Uh, me talk about, and I would say most likely not. If you if you were to talk about it from a developing aspect, and you, you know, frankly, it's a tough, it's probably a tough area to live in to come out and drive in there, drive out every day. If sure. any of us, when you decide you might want to be brave enough to make a left hand turn, <laughs> yeah. uh, the people that come out of there just across the street to go to Kentucky Fried Chicken. Yeah, just uh, running across the street to run errands. It's it's uh, it's a heck of a lot different than running across the street in a uh, in a residential neighborhood. So you have to put a group together that basically tackles the issue, and usually it's it's at least what I'm familiar with. It's around the town planner, yep. and you work on zoning, you work on all that stuff, and the other thing is you work on the transition, so that that if you're impacting somebody. What you'd like to do is to make the impact um, positive as you can. Um, you know, I, I mean, case in point, okay, I had a downsize at that 900 person organization by 10%, okay, in a company that never laid off lifetime employment, yeah. okay, and the site that basically was a month before the company bought it was four votes away from a union in a non-union company. We paid people to go away. We basically sat down with them, found the ones that were having the most trouble, paid them all to leave, and then surveyed them a year later. 90% of them were glad they did because they weren't gonna make it. So I mean, part of this, and if you do it, you, you make their property worth more money. So they win. Yep. And then your other things, you know, somebody goes into a nicer house. You bring in a business that lets somebody get a job instead of um, living off of uh, an EBT card or some, some put. It all starts to work in a positive sense, but you got to have a plan. you got to say, where do I want to go? Um, hey, we are. You, you, but, no, Bonnie, one of my things said, you know, we brought up the Westfield project. Mm -hmm. The minute the town said it had to be, um, Low income housing? It had to be 10% low income. So, yeah. yeah. But that was an, apparently it just scared the developer away. 10% affordable had to be. Affordable. Well, to qualify, I was in on that There's education from the know. beginning. Okay. But to qualify for the use of CPC funds, okay, because a portion of that would have been funded through a CPC grant, remember all that? It had to be 10% affordable. So maybe that wasn't the way to do it, but was to package it some other way outside of CPC. I mean, it's well, still, I think that, I, I mean, I don't want to get into the, we need to be careful, but we, and this is some of the coaching that's going on tonight, don't get into specifics. Yeah, Keep well, a lot of that was, you know, people, um, we were told over and over and over, nobody really wants it down there. So I don't know how much of that you could believe that the seniors really didn't want it or 
or whether they were just so fixed in the, the way of life that they I, I had, don't know. living in downtown is what they wanted. So, but now you've got Rosebrook right next door, mm -hmm. which would have solved their medical needs when one of the issue back then was why would they want to be so far away from the hospital, okay? So there were a lot of if, ifs and ands. And, and that's and what that. people, a group get together, starts to ask the why and understand and mm -hmm. gets down to what really happened yeah. and, and what do you really have to do? How do you sell it? But I think you, you said, I mean, I, I went full circle around with my, with my commentary um, and I, I mean, you, you pinpointed, um, you know, uh, having, you know, it goes back to planning and, and inspectional services and we don't have what we need. We don't have what we need. Okay. Right? Yeah. So you can't, you can't lay that on their shoulders. I mean, I did read what you guys all sent to me of what your, your, um, your priorities were. I mean, I think I kind of, we kind of knew we're all pretty much on the same page as to what sort of priorities we were looking at when we're looking at the budget from a financial standpoint. Um, and that is, you know, um, public safety, you know, and we have a crisis out there with our young people dying. And it's, it's not necessarily crime, but it's a social issue. There are things going on, um, but it falls into the realm of public safety. Um, and, you know, our issues with the, you know, you, know, you know, wanting to figure out better ways of doing stuff in government, you know, modernizing. But then you got the, you're putting that huge burden on the IT department that's already overburdened. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. The, the, I think that, one of the interesting things is the possibility of the trains coming down to West Wareham mm. and the impact that's going to have. And thank goodness the high real estate costs within the city of Boston. I mean, it's just incredible how expensive it is and how little you get for how much money it costs. And so people are going to be able to want to want to commute and work. In but the again, metro. you're going to get you're going to get the families living here and commuting into the or city the, to work or the the so. the, uh, the younger yeah. not necessarily singles so people aren't getting you know they're getting married in their 30s and and having smaller families so yeah. these professionals there's, there's don't a have lot a lot of kids huh these professionals don't have a lot of kids yeah that one or two. they take a so, toll on you those little things <laughs> but yeah, when you get a job <laughs> But uh, that's going to be that, that's going to have a, potentially a huge impact over the next ten years, I would imagine, on this town as to what, how we look. But we still don't have enough commercial ma manufacturing and and uh, industrial type businesses in town. You're and probably the, not going to get them, Tom. That those days are are really gone. Um, we don't make stuff anymore. Uh, and we, what we do is we... Uh, we make croutons. What? We make no, croutons. this thing used to be the size of a refrigerator. The, uh, uh, we also now, make raisins. Now it's one chip and a whole mess of software. There's probably thousands of people that are sitting there in Seattle and San Francisco and places like that that write the codes of this They're thing. doing this now. What? They're doing this. Uh, you oh. know, the advantage of that now <laughs> is that you, the main advantage people have identified is you can tell what time it is instead of, <laughs> instead of doing this. But no, I think yeah, that I was referring to the Apple Watch. <laughs> it, there, there are a lot of things. I, you know, you go to the you go to the the Vogue School, and they'll tell you what what the the middle class jobs are that the, the people are getting. One of them, obviously, is healthcare. I mean, that center you go down to that um, South Coast thing. Um, and there's a lot of where people that have got pretty good jobs in that place. And there's a lot more that would, would happen if you can go after that kind of stuff. Um, the, the, I looked at the manufacturing level in, in Massachusetts, and the dollars have not budged in 15 years, the, the amount that we make. Uh, but of course, the cost has gone gone up. But, but it's, it, it changes, and it's, uh, there's still a lot of good stuff you can do. But My father had a rubber thread factory in the Fall River. He was in a partnership. What? They were a rubber thread factory. It's a partnership in Fall River, right under Braga Bridge, actually. And they, uh, they were the last maker of extruded rubber thread in North America. Uh, and they uh, yeah, competing against the Malaysians and such. So. 
Um, well, even Bear Bradley who used to be made well, in Fall the, River yeah. is now made in, 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 in Asia. Nye, Nye firm in uh, New Bedford is a yeah. one and only oil um, manufacturer, and they also make threads for mm-hmm. fur coats. Uh, Maury Povich just opened up his place in New Bedford, restarted a a, uh, a clo- American clothing uh, line. Funny things. But the... Uh, I, I shouldn't say, I mean, that we should discuss it. And it, I should, no, there's... I, I shouldn't say no. That was a mistake. There should be a group together and it should be able to, you can sit around a table and uh, spitball, if you will, the craziest suggestions to the, to the most traditional um, without ridicule and such. Because who knows... You know, when you start sitting down there, you, you don't know what's going to work. If if you told me uh, I was going to propose when I came in that the uh, that the employees uh, increase their their costs on health care, in other words, cut them, change the split so the employees take a larger section, you would everyone would have said you're 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 darn right nuts. They just didn't. Re- they didn't realize that we the type of employees that we have, and they realize that they, you know, the predicament of the town, and they're trying to trying to work within it as well. So, it's until we start moving in certain directions, we truly don't know what what we can actually do. Um, and there's, and the town does. We have a base of certain items, uh, and certain when you speak to this is what I want to get a point. We have a uh, community and economic development authority. We receive a grant of what about, I think it's down to about three quarters of a million dollars a year now. Uh, the unfortunate thing is we get that money because we are predominantly low to, low to moderate income. Uh, so the best thing we can do is try and utilize that, those funds to help our residents get above that mark. And the day that that we no longer qualify for that grant will be probably the first time you'll see everybody happy to lose uh, lose three quarters of a million dollars in funding. But we do, we do have them that can help us on our visions to put money into the the public private partnerships. We we do need. We've cut down on our staffing and such to the point where we don't. Uh, we aren't, I should say, able to enforce our bylaws as much, which includes things like the uh, people's properties with, with trash and the nuisance on them. You know, we've thought about ways. How, how do you do that? Do you create a bylaw enforcement division that funds itself through fines? Which I mean, if you're, if uh, from my own self as a as a homeowner, I'd probably be really ticked off if somebody came by but then again if I if I had a bunch of trash in my yard shame on me I deserve it uh, so we're trying to think of, uh, of ways because we know that we don't have the set the set revenue each and every year to create some of these expansions I mean, when you talk about what we put in the stabilization fund if you want to increase IT we know that we don't have the ability within our budgets to to fund it in one year to maybe it costs four hundred thousand dollars to upgrade our uh, our software for accounting so okay we'll use those funds and give yourself a grant for one year and then every year you have to put those those back in uh, you know these are the type of things that we're trying to do and that I'm thinking about and that's even why when people say well if you're if you're drowning, why are you creating such a thing like the stabilization fund? Well, you know, realistically, that's a tool. That's what you can, not just to help with, uh, with, uh, with a better bond rating yeah. and such, but you can use those funds. You can levy them at the opportunity when, when you really need them. We all know that, you know, the old adage of success when prep, preparation meets opportunity. Well, if we haven't prepared for it, we're, we're not going to succeed. So... I know it sounds like we're just spouting off buzzwords here, but these are probably some of the changes that our residents don't really see or, or I guess um, maybe we need to explain to them more while, why we're doing it and why it makes sense. So. Well, we're trying to explain it to them. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying to educate them. That's, that's, that's what you're trying to do. That's how we started this. Right? Well, <laughs> you know what? I really, Like I said, I, I, I kind of went on a theme. It's what we talked about over and over again. 
Um, I didn't want to get preachy about numbers, but the but letting people stop and think. That's what I wanted them to do. I just I want people to stop and think. They have to make the choice. We can't make it for them. Right. Um, and without coming out and saying, hello, this is what you voted for, this is what you got. Although I did say that somewhere <laughs> along the line there. No sour grapes. <laughs> um, yeah, but I, I, in the end, you need to stop and think about it. You know, take it for, take it for what it is and, and go into town meeting um, deciding you know, to vote for what it is we really want. Well, and to recognize that we, <coughs> that progress has been made. Progress has been made. Um, and there was no rabbit in the hat that miraculously appeared at the fifth hour. It just didn't appear. Sorry, the rabbit ran away. Sorry. <laughs> we made soup out of it. So. <laughs> we just, yeah, we made soup we out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, so talk about that's true. We still got a sense of humor after all this time. Uh, um, so uh, we're, I'm going to rewrite that one section about. But it's good. About my favorite pot. Yeah, I can. Uh, I've got some of the estimates from the you old like in-kind numbers, so I can give those you to like you on this? the portion. Okay. It just it, in order for us to have that budget with everything in there, it would require basically having an agreement with the school, agreeing on right, certain portions right. and such. So at this, uh, I can see us working towards something in the future, but with um, with the time we had this year right. and going and forward. And you don't you know, give them getting through the DOR and this is the way they're yeah. reading it, you know. It, we, yeah. I yeah. totally get that, but I would kind of like to know at least an overall estimate of what right. that figure really is, yep. you know. Yeah. Um, so with that note, um, I have just a couple of things that Kelly needs to hone down, and that's going to be she's missing some recommendations. I am really, really looking towards Mr. Langdon in writing the recommendation for the budget. How do you feel about doing that? You want me to write it? No. I would love you to write the recommendation. On the, the wonderful, budget. the wonderful uh, Derek budget. <laughs> <laughs> well, it went from BS to DS. His budget. What? <laughs> From BS to DS's budget. <laughs> Is that a It's usually the yeah. opposite, Tom, right? <laughs> That's about the third one tonight, Tom. This is good. I think Kelly. Derek, you most. sound a lot healthier than you have recently, so it's right. nice. It sounds as though the budget is getting wrapped up. We can measure. Did you guys your uh, clean the town hall of its bug? Uh, yeah, unfortunately, municipal maintenance uh, moved on to there, but the bunch of uh, uh, some uh, some cleaning and some horse pill size uh, antibiotics have done a bunch of us wonders. Right, so. wonderful, wonderful. Okay, so um, you agree, Mr. Lang, and you will take on um, number six. <coughs> the recommendation for Article Six, the Article budget. Article Six, right? Okay, I'm going to write the um, paper, um, the no action on the other four that we voted. Um, that's five, right? I'm all confused. Five and six, we needed that. Twenty. Twenty-one. You had twenty? No, yeah, it seems like we should. That. We got to knock this oh, you piece. Did? Yeah, because you put twenty on here. We don't want to put that. You got you got from Dom and Tom. Yeah, I, that, yeah, this is updated. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, that's so you good on twenty. Yep. So and twenty one, I'm gonna fix for you. Yep. Okay. So that just that's it. Oh wow, that's Do it. We, if they're gonna vote to oh, yeah. their money down. Oh, three and four. These are the ones that I'm missing. Who had the harbor services permits? You guys remember? Tom. Did you have the harbor services permits? I did. I didn't. I can take it. I didn't. Are you, I, you, I don't remember. I'm missing two, and I don't know who I assigned them. It was harbor the, service permit receipts, um, which was on the special and the tax title collection revolving fund. I still know if they were ever signed. I thought did I assigned David them, but I guess David I didn't. Any? I maybe David did. did. Yeah, I ever received anything. Number three is it? Is it, that's housekeeping, is it not? That, on the special. Harbor Services permit? No, that is his um, number three. 
Indeed. He'll be taking the money out, yeah, to pay for the uh, for the, the new dock? pickup. Yeah, he's buying oh, the new pickup truck. Yeah, okay. or the the pickup truck. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I'll, you want me to write that up? Can you write that approval on that? You, you've got everything else. For I have everything else from you. Yes. And the tax title collection. I don't know who was supposed to do that. Can you take care of that too, Tom? The tax title? Sure. If you'd like. Yeah, no, I, whatever, if you, you're the boss. <laughs> I'm not the boss. <laughs> I'm looking for volunteers. <laughs> well, anybody who spoke too much, get. <laughs> no. Well, if people I'm have kidding. a good, no, good that's all right, that's all right. strong opinion, I think it's great. Um, so that should clear up those things. Try to get them in um, to Kelly tomorrow, no later than Saturday. Can you handle that? Can you do it by email, Tom? Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, and if I, have I got your email address? Is it on that? Um, yes. It's that one you keep sending out? So yes. Under? Okay. So she's going <laughs> to need this. Um, she's going to put this all together by Saturday. Um, at least our side will be finished. We can't blame us. <laughs> um, can I ask oh, now, we're, are we going to put the glossary of terms and the town procedures in? Please. Please. Okay. Yes? Yeah, we talked about uh, Just that. in the annual, no, I don't think Yeah, just special. in the annual, right. right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Like we had before. Yep. Okay. And then you're going to put the budget as a, as a appendix, appendix in the back. Mm -hmm. um, there was also, we are printing the Mass General Law one right underneath the, the thing, right? I, can, I wrote that you mean for the um, fire. Yeah. I put that in. In the article? In the article. Beautiful. As part of the explanation. Beautiful. So it's right there so we don't have to do that. If I remember last year too, Kelly, we did the uh, we did the WPCF and the EMS as separate, yeah. So right, as appendices. Yeah. So if, are we gonna have that as well? Yeah, I do have that. So. Okay, great. That's what I was fing fing right, I was gonna ask fingering that. through here for yeah. that because something else that was. Um, oh my God, that's here. They are. That's that one, which is fine. We are toying around too with trying to um, trying to do just uh, sandwich has a pretty neat overall format of the budget that shows it all on one page. It's not the line items or anything like that, but I would say general government shows the revenues, which a little bit easier to follow than than the whole document. So I'm looking to see if we can uh, if we can sort of put something like that together as well. Anything good? Yeah. We have got to build the confidence of the people that, that money is not being wasted. Perhaps I should start with not saying my bad jokes and stuff. That sure. might build more yeah. confidence. It wasn't well, a federal crime. You could I walk, think walk that in and burn a ten dollar um, bill, but that uh. last year I think went really smoothly. There was really enough education. I think people really got an idea of what was going on very far in advance. Um, you know, with doing mock town meeting and all of that. Um, yeah. I mean, we went through that budget pretty darn quickly without a lot of objections. Because um, I think people do understand, you know, back in the day when they took it line by line and et cetera, you, they've, they've now realized you can't pick apart a budget just because you think you want to pull this. It's got a balance. It, it, uh, it's always good to remind them you know it's like the advertisement you come back and you hit them again with it and yeah a good short summary um, uh, yeah, high level stuff I think would would just frame it up and get them in, in yeah, what, what get, are the three things you want me, me to remember hmm. right yeah well, tell them once tell them give them all the detail and then come back and tell them again what you want to remember uh, you must have been through community spawn when you speak publicly they teach you tell them when you're gonna tell them Three points, that's all you get. Three. And then tell them what you told them and leave. 
then your odds of success are pretty high. Like so. this Madam Moderator had enough of us tonight left too. Yeah, um, we were inventing. So now we've gotten this far and then like uh, during the week we'll be working on the motions. I take it they're already working on the motions? Yeah. Uh, they'd worked on some of them before okay. and such, so. Cool. Is it, it's a tradition for this committee that those people who are leaving the committee give a party for the people who are standing <laughs> there. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Since I'm the only one who showed up. <laughs> Must be me. <laughs> oh, don't Dominic hiding? Well, Dominic and Donna are here. Well, Donna's in Florida. She went oh, back to Florida. Florida. She actually flew out today. I knew she was leaving again. Um, I, I thought Dominic would at least be here. We can, we can try out the new Marriott. So it must be at, <laughs> at home. So and I guess Dominic's, Dominic's going to be nice. staying with me until June 30th then. <laughs> All right, anything else? Do we meet next week or not? We are not meeting no, next we're week. We're not meeting. Next, the next one is the rehearsal. Yep, but now our next meeting will be the public hearing on April the 22nd here at 6.30. Um, you guys can always vote on some of the items then. We could, technically, at the yeah. public hearing. We could, thank you. We want to do that. If, if I have the information by then, are you promising oh. me that? Am I getting unicorns and rainbows again? Bonnie, uh, Bonnie always gives gives more than she takes. <laughs> I have to remember when to shut up with her. <laughs> so who was the wise man that just said that after he walked into that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would definitely be an opportunity to vote if we have the proper information. Yes. I have to remember that this is my current one because I'm all confused here as I start writing these things together. All right, so those are our deadlines. Our next meeting will be the April 22nd. Please get all those recommendations into Kelly at your earliest convenience by midnight tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for the drizzle in the morning. You said Maybe I was the cold. boss, so there. All right, so then she's reminded me that it is Monday, April 27th, will be our town meeting. All righty. And do I have any liaison reports? No. Any other business? None? Do I have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion. motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Okey-dokey then. <laughs> Thank, you. Come through the little ones. Thank you for gracing our our company.